very excited to have uh, to have our forum. And to, now we'll do it virtually. Next year we'll do it in person. So I think we're just waiting for the prime minister. And then um, I guess at some point they'll tell me if he's there. And I think at that point we begin. of India, Sri Narendra Modi, has joined us. And it is my distinct honor to welcome Prime Minister Modi to the fourth India Energy Forum by Sirweek. Mr. Prime Minister, thank you and welcome. Since the time we first shared the dais during India's Urja Sangam in New Delhi, I've observed the impressive transformation of the Indian energy sector through your visionary policies and your relentless focus on outcomes. We deeply value your presence here and look forward to your remarks shortly. Honorable Prime Minister, Honorable Sri Dharmendra Pradhan, Minister of Petroleum and Natural Gas and Minister of Steel, Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, friends, and the community of the India Energy Forum and Sarah Week. It is a tremendous pleasure to welcome all of you to the India Energy Forum by Sir Week and IHS Market. Minister Pradhan, thank you for your vision to bring Sir Week to India, and even in the face of the pandemic, for making the 2020 virtual event a reality. This is testament to your ministry's de dedication and commitment to securing India's energy future. This month, the entire world celebrated Mahat Gandhi's 151st birth anniversary. A century ago, this great leader created new pathways to peace and freedom for the world. And now is the right time for India to create new pathways in sustainable energy, alleviating energy poverty in the world. What a year it has been since we gathered at the 2019 India Energy Forum. The COVID-19 pandemic has had a heavy impact on every corner of the globe. The energy industry has experienced profound disruptions leading to great volatility and uncertainty. Yet the energy industries have done a remarkable job of delivering supplies and assuring energy services in the face of a crisis that was in almost no one's emergency planning plan, emergency plan. And thank you to the many in this conference who have played essential roles in making this happen. The crisis has brought forth unprecedented cooperation among governments to stabilize energy markets and a new wave of innovation and technology. Global business and commerce have been reshaped and strategies to invest have been repurposed to build back better. As I write in my new book called The New Map, these transformations, many accelerated by COVID-19, are indeed part of what is a new map of relationships in energy, in business, and in geopolitics. Central to this map are the transformations that have been brought about by one of the most powerful forces in the world, the growth, development, and prosperity of India. Over the next three days, this forum will impact, unpack the story of India and its impact in the context of the changing global economy and the energy transition and the challenges thereof. 
Among the topics of this forum are the development of India's energy resources in an increasingly competitive world, India's integration with global markets and the regulatory needs, climate, sustainable development, economic growth, and the remedies for urban pollution. The transitions in mobility, renewables, biofuels, energy reliability, and urbanization in India and of great importance, supply chains and innovative strategies and technologies. The insight and learnings on these themes will come from ministers and government officials from India, the United States, Saudi Arabia, and elsewhere, senior leaders of business, of industry, and civil society, and my own colleagues in IHS Markets expert research team. There is no better partner to commence this virtual Seer Week journey than with our partners in India. To the governor, Government of India and the Ministry of Petroleum and Natural Gas, thank you. To our India Energy Forum community and our global Seer Week community listening and watching all over the world, we look forward to your contributions and engagement. It is now my pleasure, my great pleasure, to welcome the Honorable Dharmendra Pradhan, Minister of Petroleum and Natural Gas and Minister of Steel for India. Minister of Pradhan, welcome. The floor is yours. Thank you, Dr. Yargin. Honorable Prime Minister Sir Narendra Modi Ji, His Royal Highness Prince Abdul Aziz, Minister of Energy of Saudi Arabia, His Excellency Dr. Mr. Dan Bruet, the U.S. Secretary of Energy, Dr. Yargin, Vice Chairman, IHS Market, Captains from the Global Oil and Gas Companies, Friends from the Media, Ladies and Gentlemen, Namaste. It is indeed a privilege to welcome Honorable Prime Minister Sir Narendra Modi Ji to the inauguration of India Energy Forum by Sarah Week. I wish to place on record my deep appreciation of of His Excellency Dan Bruet, the U.S. Secretary of Energy and His Royal Highness Prince Abdul Aziz, Minister of Energy of Saudi Arabia, for their participation in the inaugural session. This is reflective of our growing strategic energy partnership with U.S. and Saudi Arabia. A very warm welcome to all of the fourth edition of the Indian Energy Forum by Sarah Week. We meet today in a virtual format. This is reflective of our determination to meet despite the challenges posed by the global pandemic COVID-19. It all started in 2017 with the idea of bringing together the global energy leaders and experts to India to deliberate on the opportunities and challenges in India's energy sector in the SERA week format. I thank Dr. Daniel Ergin for readily agreeing to it and sustaining the momentum of the event during the last three years. Since its modest beginning, the event has progressively evolved into an annual event on Indian energy future, wherein the captains of global and Indian energy industry exchange ideas and insights on innovation, emerging technologies, and solutions to the contemporary challenges to improve India's energy landscape. I'm glad that Due to the efforts of Indian oil and gas sector and the teams at FIPI, this has become an annual event. Ladies and gentlemen, while the COVID-19 pandemic has impacted the global economy profoundly, it has also created a unique opportunity to build better as we position ourselves to recover from this crisis. With more than 1.3 billion people, India is the third largest consumer of energy in the world. Our energy requirement in the coming years are bound to grow as per capita energy consumption still far below the global average. We are confident to meet national energy needs based on the energy vision as led by Honorable Prime Minister Sri Modi ji, covering energy access, energy efficiency, energy sustainability, energy security and energy justice. Our energy agenda in India is inclusive market-based and climate-sensitive. To meet the rapid growth of our energy needs, we had been working on a mission mode. Ladies and gentlemen, under the decisive and visionary leadership of Prime Minister Modi, 
who are making concrete efforts and taking all necessary steps to take energy sector fuel India's economic growth during the post-COVID period. We are now on the road to full recovery of petroleum products consumption compared to the pre-COVID level. Energy has become an essential component and even a strategic component in our bilateral engagements with several key global players. Under the neighborhood fast policy, we are developing energy corridors with neighboring countries and beyond to promote energy access in the region. Our global outreach to international fora, including International Energy Forum, International Energy Agency, and OPEC has been strengthened. Indian oil and gas industry has made significant strides in the recent years. It has risen to the occasion in a commendable manner during these challenging times by ensuring energy supplies, including the clean cooking fuel, reach the remotest part of the country. I am confident that the Indian Energy Forum will provide a unique platform for Indian oil and gas and other energy sectors for engaging with the global players and experts of the developing new insights and a better way forward for India's energy sector in the past changing global energy landscape. I again thank Dr. Daniel Ergin and the Sera Week team for devising extensive deliberation during the next three days covering the entire spectrum of India's energy sector. We now look forward to the inaugural remarks of Honorable Prime Minister of India and his gracious lunch of fourth edition, the Indian Energy Forum Sera Week. Thank you, friends. Thank you, Minister Pradhan, for your remarks, for your partnership in the India Energy Forum, and your forceful commitment to India's energy future. It is now my pleasure to introduce a video message from Prince Abdulaziz bin Salman, the Minister of Energy from the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia, whom we will also hear from later in this forum. Um. Honorable Prime Minister uh, Narendra Modi, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, my friend and personal friends from India, our friends from India, all over India, great India. It's a pleasure to be taking part in this event and an honor to be sharing this platform with the Honorable Prime Minister a valued partner for the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia. Indeed, India is more than a partner. I cannot think of any two countries in the world that share greater synergy and interdependence than India and Saudi Arabia. Prime Minister Modi's recent historical visit to the Kingdom and his meeting with the custodian of the two holy mosques, King Salman bin Abdul Aziz, and his royal highness, the Crown Prince, Prince Mohammed bin Salman, witnessed a climax of centuries-old partnership. And it sets the, sta the stage for a, a more prolonged strategic relationship. In fact, it put it in stones. With the establishment of India and Saudi Arabia strategic partnership, under the council set up by this agreement, I have the honor to co-chair the Ministerial Committee for Economy and Investment between our two countries. And from this partner perspective, I can see clearly that the future of our two nations are intertwined. During the visit, the two countries signed eight memorandum of understanding, including agreements on energy field, for cooperation in renewable, where there are greater opportun great opportunities, including manufacturing. There was also important agreement for meeting uh, India demand MOU between Saudi Aramco and Indian and the Indian Strategic Petroleum Reserves. Honorable Prime Minister Modi, distinguished guests. Energy is the engine of both of our economies. Saudi Arabia is the world's biggest oil exporter. India is one of the fastest growing energy consumers in the world. In economic terms, we are complementary. But it goes beyond energy. 
we also share vision. India with the vision of, for a new India. Prime Minister Modi has pioneered. And Saudi Arabia with its vision 2030, pioneered by His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Prince Mohammed. At the heart of both visions is the goal of enduring economic modernization fueled by energy innovation and growth of high-tech knowledge economy and openness towards international trade. India has already reaped big rewards, one of the world's largest economies with the world-renowned skills and in information technology, space exploration, and the medical science, as well as financial services, along with other services. Now, as a global energy market, as a global as the global energy market face challenges of security and, and stability, the COVID-19 pandemic, and climate change, we must be ready for coordinating and cooperating. In the days after September 14th last year, the attack on Abqaiq and Khrais, the worst and most serious disruption in oil history has occurred, plunging the energy world into an uncertainty. I spent a good part of the next three days on the phone to my friend uh, and colleague, uh, Darmananda Baradhan, Minister of Petroleum and Natural Gas, to reassure him that India, that the Indian economy would not be impacted or disrupted by this incident. And indeed, we delivered. This is a priority for Saudi Arabia. We are conscious of the importance of the Indian economy to the world, and we know for certain that when its engine of development is working well, both economies prosper, ours and yours, whether due to outrageous attack or just the demand of seasonality. Saudi Arabia is always ready to demonstrate this pledge to India. It's a welcomed pledge and we will continue delivering on our pledges. We have never forfeit our promises. We have never forfeited our pledges. On the big issue of the day, climate change, Saudi Arabia is a firm advocate of circular carbon economy. And it's four R's. Reduce, reuse, recycle, and remove. This seeks to replicate the cycle of nature in managing greenhouse gas emissions to keep the temperature rise to be below 2 degrees centigrade from all forms of hydrocarbon, which makes this approach effective for both Saudi Arabia and India. Thanks to the support of India through His Excellency, the Minister of Power and Renewable Energy, uh, Raj Komar Singh, we were able to secure four winds instead of the win-win situation. And the four wind situations is a way which we successfully managed in our recent G20 energy minister, minister's communique. Four different initiatives, one on sustainability, such as the CCE, energy access, security, and market stability. Cleaner energy system, including renewable and less emitting hydrocarbons, will be at the heart of our future relationship. There are great opportunities for both countries in the renewable energy sphere, including the strategic partners we have joined, like the International Solar Alliance. It will put our countries at the forefront of energy transition for the good of future generations. Distinguished uh, Right Honorable Prime Minister, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, India and Saudi Arabia have shared advantages as we can confront our common challenges. 
we have a wealth of resources, we have a visionary leadership, and we have a capable and efficient institutions. We are, we are also propelled by an ambitious citizens. As you can see, we're found together by a far more than just energy. Let us proceed in partnership to realize our potential and achieve our shared destiny. Thank you. You're excellent. Thank you. Yeah. We thank you, uh, Your Royal Highness, for uh, those very thoughtful remarks. I'm now very pleased to introduce the Honorable Dan Bruyette, who is the Secretary of Energy of the United States, in a video recorded message. And I note that Dan Secretary Bruyette will be with us live on Wednesday. So now to his message. Your Excellency Prime Minister Modi, Minister Perdon and Minister Abdul Aziz, and dear colleagues, I'm pleased to convey the importance of the energy partnership between the United States and India. When President Trump traveled to Delhi in February of this year, I had the distinct honor of accompanying him to highlight our strong bilateral relationship, particularly in the energy sector. As we'll discuss this week at the Energy Forum, India's robust economic growth impacts not only its own domestic energy sector, but also the global energy landscape. As India continues its energy transition and makes further advancements toward the Prime Minister's ambitious policy goals, we are proud to partner with India across the sector and to expand innovation that will meet the challenges of tomorrow. The United States and India enjoy a close relationship that builds upon long-standing ties with innovative R&D collaboration on breakthrough technologies, as well as a growing commercial partnership. As Minister Pradhan noted, we launched the U.S.-India Strategic Energy Partnership in April of 2018 at the direction of President Trump and Prime Minister Modi to expand and elevate our engagement through both government and industry channels. This partnership has strengthened our relationship deepened our energy engagement, and facilitated new areas of cooperation. In fact, this past July, at the two-year mark of the SEP, Minister Perdon and I held a meeting to review progress. I am proud to say that we have achieved remarkable success. For example, we established the U.S.-India Gas Task Force, an industry-led group that supports efforts to expand India's gas sector while working to reduce trade and investment barriers, Several innovative ideas have been generated from this fruitful dialogue. Can you add that one? In a similar vein, we recently launched a public-private hydrogen task force yeah. to work uh, toward reducing six, six. emissions and enhancing energy security and resiliency. It's already connected. Huh? Working oh, with pleasure. industry, we aim to develop novel technologies oh, and bring you. down the costs of deployment. Thank you. We're proud of our R&D collaboration on smart grids and energy storage, working to make the grid smarter while increasing resilience and reliability. We're also pursuing new R&D cooperation to advance coal technologies, including carbon capture, utilization, and storage. And since our two countries share a common, all of the above approach to energy, together we are pursuing everything from enhanced oil and gas trade to renewable energy development to civil nuclear cooperation. We're bringing the brightest minds of our two nations together to develop all forms of energy and all technologies to provide reliable and affordable power to our citizens. On the trade front, our relationship continues to grow, with the United States becoming an increasingly important energy supplier to India to help meet its growing demand. Last year, the United States became the sixth largest supplier of crude and the fifth largest supplier of LNG to India, and India remains the largest global importer of U.S. coal. This growing trade relationship serves as yet another symbol of our deepening strategic partnership. The impact of COVID pandemic on supply chains and global energy markets has only reinforced the vital importance of our partnership. And while energy demand and our exports have declined due to the pandemic, I commit to you today that India can count on American energy imports as the economy rebounds. Our two nations working together to address common challenges and advance energy innovation will ensure continued economic prosperity for both our countries and for our fellow citizens around the world. I look forward to hearing the discussions throughout this week 
on new opportunities for cooperation as India continues its energy transformation. I thank you for your attention and I wish you a successful conference. Thank you. We appreciate Secretary Bruyette's uh, comments. And now, ladies and gentlemen, it is really uh, an immense privilege and honor to welcome the Prime Minister of India, the Honorable Narendra Modi, to address this forum. Prime Minister Modi has led India since the world's largest democracy since 2014. And under his leadership, India has established itself as a pillar of the global economy, one of the most dynamic economies in the world, and a strategic ally and partner of the United States and Saudi Arabia, as we just heard, and many other countries. Mr. Prime Minister, we are very honored to have you with us. We look forward to hearing your vision about India and the role that energy will play in advancing your agenda for growth, sustainability, and prosperity for the people of India. Ladies and gentlemen, the Prime Minister of India. Hey. Mr. Glenn Broilet, U.S. Secretary of Energy, His Royal Highness Prince Abdul Aziz, Minister of Energy of Saudi Arabia, Dr. Daniel Ergin, Vice Chairman, IHS Market, my colleagues, Sri Dharmendra Pradhan, Captains of Global Oil and Gas Industry, Namaste. Wonderful to see you all at the fourth edition of Indian Energy Forum, Sera Week. I would like to congratulate Dr. Daniel Ergin for his contribution to the energy sector. I also congratulate him on his recent book, The New Map. Friends, the theme this year is relevant. It is India's energy future in a world of change. I can assure you, India is full of energy. India's energy future is bright and secure. Let me explain why I feel so. Friends, this year has been challenging for the energy sector. Energy demand fell by almost one third. There has been price instability. Investment decisions have been impacted. Leading global bodies project that there will be a contraction in global energy demand over the next few years also. But these agencies project India to emerge as a leading energy consumer. India is set to nearly double its energy consumption over the long term. Friends, there are many areas in which we see this vibrancy. For example, take aviation. India is the third largest and the fastest growing aviation market in terms of domestic aviation. Indian carriers are projected to increase their fleet size from 600 to 1200 by 2024. This is big jump. Friends, India believes that access to energy must be affordable and reliable. That is when socio-economic transformation can take place. We view the energy sector as one that empowers people and furthers ease of living. India achieved 100% electrification. LPG coverage increase. 
these changes particularly help our rural areas our middle class and the women of india friends india's energy plan aims to ensure energy justice that too while fully following our global commitments for sustainable growth this means more energy to improve the lives of indians but with a smaller carbon footprint friends our energy sector will be growth centric industry friendly and environment conscious that is why india is among the most active nations in furthering renewable source of energy friends in the last 6 years more than 36 crore or 360 million led bulbs were distributed the cost of led bulbs has also reduced tenfold in the last 6 years over 1.1 crore or 11 million smart led street lights were installed these have enabled an estimated energy saving of 60 billion units per year the estimated greenhouse gas emission reduction with this program is over 4.5 crore or 45 million tons of carbon dioxide annually along with all these we also saved around rupees 24000 crore or rupees 240 billion annually it is due to such interventions that reports have said that india is the most attractive emerging market for clean energy investment friends as i said india will always work keeping in mind global good we are well on track to meet the commitment we made to the global community we had aimed to increase the renewable energy installed capacity by 175 gigawatt by 2022 we have further extended this goal to 450 gigawatt by 2030 india has one of the lowest carbon emissions than the rest of the industrialized world yet we will continue to make efforts to fight climate change friends india's reform journey has been on the high speed for the last 6 years the energy sector has seen many path breaking reforms reforms in exploration and licensing policy were put in place in february 2019 the focus has shifted from revenue to production maximization there is also focus on greater transparency and streamlined procedures we plan to grow our refining capacities from about 250 to 400 million metric tons per annum by 2025 increasing domestic gas production has been a key government priority we plan to achieve one nation one gas grid and shift towards gas based economy friends for too long the world has seen 
क्रूड प्राइसेस ऑन अ रोलर कोस्टर वी नीड टू मूव टवर्ड्स रिस्पॉन्सिबल प्राइसिंग वी हैव टू वर्क टवर्ड्स ट्रांसपेरेंट एंड फ्लेक्सिबल मार्केट्स फॉर बोथ ऑयल एंड गैस फ्रेंड्स टू इंक्रीज डोमेस्टिक प्रोडक्शन ऑफ नेचुरल गैस and to bring uniformity in the market price discovery of gas we have announced natural gas marketing reforms earlier this month they will give greater marketing freedom in the sale of natural gas through e bidding india's first automated national level gas trading platform was launch in june this year this prescribes standard procedures to discover the market price of gas friends we are moving forward with the vision of atmanirbhar bharat a self reliant india will also be a force multiplier for the global economy energy security is at the core of our efforts you would be happy to know that our work is giving positive results during these challenging times we have witnessed investment through the oil and gas value chain we are seeing similar sign in other sector too friends we are driving strategic and comprehensive energy engagements with the key global energy players as part of india's neighborhood first policy we are developing energy corridors with our neighboring countries for mutual benefit friends ray of sun brighten the journey of human progress like the seven horses driving the chariot of sun god india's energy map will have seven key drivers the drivers of change are accelerating our efforts to move towards a gas based economy cleaner use of fossil fuel particularly petroleum and coal greater reliance on domestic source to drive biofuels achieving the renewable targets of 450 gigawatt by 2030 increasing the contribution of electricity to decarbonize mobility moving into the emerging fuels including hydrogen digital innovation across all the energy systems there will be continuity of these robust energy policies that have been in place over the last 6 years friends india energy forum sera week is serving as an important platform between industry government and society i am confident that this conference will have fruitful deliberations for a better energy future i state again india's energy will energize the world thank you thank you again thank you mr prime minister for that uh, what a powerful vision you have articulated we all stand ready to support your vision and contribute to achieving what you laid out the energy dimensions of what you laid out for what you called high speed growth with energy justice and also with the environmental commitment we let me just again uh thank the prime minister modi minister pradhan his excellency uh prince abdul aziz secretary bruyet and to all the speakers and delegates of this conference i wish everyone a very productive and insightful and very timely 2020 india energy forum the india energy forum will continue now with his excellency Secretary General Mohammad Sanusi Barkindo of OPEC with my colleague Carlos pa uh, Pascual Pascual 
and also at the same time the CEO roundtable with the Prime Minister will begin and I turn over the proceedings for that to the Vice Chairman of Niti Ayog, Dr. Rajiv Kumar. Thank you to everybody and wish you a great conference.